Good day, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Rehab Gaming. So what we have here is a copy of Excite Bike for the Nintendo Entertainment System platform. And as you can see, somebody decided to ride on the outside of this game cart with permanent marker. In this episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the tips and tricks that I use in order to try and get permanent marker off of your game carts and make them look as close to brand new as possible. Stay tuned, and we'll get right at it. All right, so thank you for joining us. So the tools that we're going to need in order to accomplish our goal of getting this permanent marker off this game cart is going to be a handful of Q-tips or cotton swabs, as they're also known, a soft bristle toothbrush. We're going to need a fine tip Phillips head screwdriver in order to separate the case. And we're also going to need a high concentration isopropyl alcohol. Now I have 91% isopropyl alcohol that I'm using. You can also use 99%. The higher the concentration, the better the alcohol works at removing the permanent marker from the outside of your game cartridge. So we're going to go ahead and clear off our workspace. Since I'm using 91% isopropyl alcohol, I'm actually putting it in a smaller bottle. That way it's a little more easier to manage. And uh, I also use it because it has a sprayer attachment on top. So if I had other game carts that didn't have labels that I had to worry about or any areas that I wanted to spray directly onto whatever I'm cleaning, that sprayer attachment in that bottle works perfectly for that. So for starters, what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over and you have three Phillips head screws on the back side of your game cartridge. In order to take the uh, this version of the NES game cart apart, you have to remove these three screws and we'll go ahead and do that now. And actually it looks like this is gonna be a flathead screw down in here. There we go. So I stand corrected. It looks like this card is actually held together with uh, flathead screws. So we'll just grab a fine tip flathead screwdriver and we'll work these screws out. There we go. Now, in order to just crack the game card open, lift up on the back side, there are two tabs on the top of the game card or also considered the front of the game card. And you just rock it up. Make sure you're not binding on those tabs and then rock away. So as we open it up, you can see that the clips are on this side. This is going to be the back of the game cartridge and the holes for the clips to rest into is going to be on the front side of the game cartridge. Now, as we open it up and we take a look at this board, the pins don't look too horrible, but they can use a fair good bit of cleaning. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and hit those a little later on with some isopropyl alcohol just to clean up the pins. I do know that this game works properly. So just to maintain the pins and make sure that it's in working order, we'll go ahead and clean them up, give them a little TLC, and then we'll place the uh, board back in the cart. Let's turn our attention to the outside of the game cartridge. So if you flop, the back over so you can see the inside you can see the color differentiation between the outside of the game cartridge and the inside this is going to be the original coloring for the nintendo uh nes game that it originally looked when it came out and then as you can see there's a lot of dirt and grime in addition to all of this uh, magic marker on the outside of the cartridge so what we're going to do is we're going to hit it with some isopropyl alcohol, get all that gunk off of there. Uh, we're definitely going to be using our fine bristle toothbrush in order to get down in here on the uh, little recess of the game cart so we can work all of that gunk and dirt out of here. And uh, for starters, what I want to try and do is just tack that um, magic marker on the front of the game case and try and get that up as best as possible. So we'll go ahead and speed up the video while we're doing that. All 
All right, so let's go ahead and look at what we did. So on this side, you can see that almost all of that magic marker came off of the game cart. And compared to this side, you can barely even tell that it was even there. You have a little bit of ink that ran down in here into the little pores of the plastic, but we're gonna clean that up a little later and you really won't be able to tell that it had permanent marker on it. Now, the best thing to remember while you are removing permanent marker from a game cartridge is that isoproof alcohol, minimal amount of pressure, and patience are your best friends. So when you're trying to get this stuff off of here, don't scrub on it too hard because the isoproof alcohol actually breaks down the ink in the magic marker and it actually becomes soluble in the isopropyl alcohol and that's what causes it to lift up off of the surface that you're trying to clean. Now there's also going to be some areas that have uh, dirt and grime and staining on the plastic. Uh, those areas are going to get cleaned up as well with isopropyl alcohol. Depending on what is on the game cart depends on how long you're going to have to scrub on it in order to get it off there. Now, there have been people in the past that suggested uh, writing over the top the old permanent marker to lift up the old permanent marker from the plastic. Um, I don't recommend this. The reason why is because you're causing more of a headache for yourself by applying more ink on there that you're going to have to take off later on. And the whole premise behind it is, is that the compounds in the permanent marker ink that causes it to stain onto plastics and to actually be absorbed into the plastics um, basically serves the same purpose as the isopropyl alcohol and it's supposed to lift the ink that is in the plastic itself on the surface up with the wet new ink. Now if you decide to go that route what you're going to run into is that when you're trying to clean it off you're going to be smearing a bunch of ink all over the place. You're actually going to be depositing that ink everywhere and the isopropyl alcohol is going to help push that ink down into the game cartridge itself. So it's going to be counterproductive and you're just going to end up with a giant mess. So what I recommend, be patient, take some time, just clean it as best as you can and also try to avoid the label here. Now, the labels can uh, be affected by the isopropyl alcohol. The alcohol can cause the ink of the labels to run. Also, the uh, liquid nature of the isopropyl alcohol can also cause the labels to become soft, brittle, they can start peeling, they can also start cracking. So you wanna protect that label as best as possible by staying away from it and using just enough alcohol to get up all of the ink from the cartridge and stay far enough away from the edge of the sticker, that way you don't run the risk of damaging it. So we're gonna go ahead and speed this back up while we clean up the rest of this game cartridge. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the area that we cleaned and it is fairly free of any permanent marker ink on the cartridge. I can see just a little bit of the staining. Uh, when permanent marker is applied to plastics, uh, the permanent marker, like I said, seeps into the plastic and it dyes the plastic. So when you're trying to remove it, you're also trying to pull out the surface layer of the permanent marker from the plastic itself. And sometimes it just takes a little while for you to be able to get it out because the isopropyl alcohol does break down the ink. But as time goes on, the longer that the ink has been exposed to the surface, the more opportunity it has had to permeate the uh, pores of the plastic and to better adhere to the plastic and actually dye it with the ink. 
So what we're going to do is, uh, now that we got most of the ink up, we're going to go ahead, grab this toothbrush, and we're just going to give the whole outside of the cartridge a real good cleaning, see if we can get it looking a lot better than what it does. So let's take a look at the progress that we made so far. So down in these valleys, the toothbrush actually gets into these valleys and the creases in the cart very, very well, and it helps lift out a lot of the dirt. And as you can tell down here on this bottom side, the flat portion of the cart, we'll wipe some of this isopropyl alcohol away, there's a little bit of uh, dirt standing there. So the best way to get this stuff off the cart is to use again a q-tip and the ice proof of alcohol and just scrub a little harder down here to try and lift that away um, these creases are actually a flat uh, glossy finish where the rest of the outside of the cart has this stippling effect the stippling effect holds dirt a lot uh, more efficiently than the flat glazy parts like here in the grooves. So it takes a little more work in order to get that gunk out of there. And then we'll go ahead and clean up the back of the game cart. Uh, we're gonna try and remove all of these marks right here and see if we can get all of that off without disrupting this back sticker. It looks at, like uh, at some point in time, the top edge of the sticker has gotten wet, so it's caused it to peel back. I mean, these games are 25 30 years old uh, 30 plus years old so they're actually in fairly decent condition for their age they're not in the best condition however uh, it's perfectly usable and uh, I honestly I like this game uh, this is one of my childhood favorites when I was growing up uh, excite bike was the first game where you can actually change the uh, the game itself to create your own tracks and I as a kid I thought that was the coolest thing ever and then uh, later on down the line you had the ability to start changing maps like in Halo and stuff like that but everything starts somewhere and this is one of the first games that used that concept so we're gonna go ahead and clean up the rest of this cart and then we'll show you how we get to uh, the main board and clean up those pins to make sure that the game works properly and that we could remove any corrosion that might be on there from all these years of setting and being blown on and all of that stuff. So give me a second, I'll clean all this up and then we'll come back and we'll start on the main board. All right, so we cleaned these up quite a bit with some uh, isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. I uh, used the toothbrush on the inside of the game cartridge halves and got most of this junk out of here now you can notice that from scrubbing on this with the isopropyl and a q-tip there's this white residue that's on this game cartridge so what that is is that's from the uh, isopropyl alcohol breaking down the top layer of the plastic uh, when these were produced the plastic was molded and then there was a protective layer that was coated over the top and over time that protective layer uh, bond to the plastic is weakened and the isopropyl alcohol starts lifting off that protective layer which causes this white residue to be left over now in order to fix this what you can use is a plastic polish compound and you can actually buff all of that out. And what that compound does is it has micro uh, abraser, uh, a micro abrasive compound in it. And it actually polishes up the plastic and it also has some chemicals in there to give the plastic a nice shine and a protective coating. So I don't have any of that on hand, unfortunately, right now. That'll be a project for another time. But we got most of the gunk off of here. We got all of the uh, permanent marker off of the game cartridge. So now it's time to turn to cleaning up the main board of the game cartridge. So just like with any other main board, 
What you'd probably want to use is the highest concentration of isopropyl alcohol possible and a Q-tip. Look at your pins, see if you have any corrosion on your pins, see if there's any wear spots, and go over the pins very generously with the isopropyl alcohol and Q-tip. Now, there is just a tiny little bit of corrosion, which is to be expected on these uh, boards. Uh, common practice, especially for when I was a kid and I didn't know any better, I thought the reason why the NES games and any cartridge-based games didn't read properly is because there were dust on the pins preventing it from making a proper connection in the console. Now that I'm older and I've learned the error of my ways, what was really happening is the moisture from the saliva that is uh, blown into the cartridge connector sits on top of these pins and that moisture is what causes the connection to take place inside of the console. And what happens over time is since saliva is an acidic compound that we produce, it corrodes copper and other uh, metals. So for example, with these pins, you can see that it looks like they had a tin layer and then some type of gold layer or a gold layer and then some type of tin layer. Unfortunately, someone possibly could have used uh, sandpaper on these pins because these are normally gold. Uh, there is a possibility that the repeated use of the cartridge, pulling the cartridge in and out of the cartridge slot in the game system could have caused the uh, top layer of the pin coating to rub off. But what you can see is that there's a goldish layer right here at the very top. And there is a little bit traces of gold down here at the bottom of the pins. But right here in the center, it's all silver. So the silver layer is actually the second layer underneath the gold, and uh, I believe it is some sort of tin. And underneath that tin is your copper. So gold has a low risk of tarnishing over time and getting called corrosion. It conducts electricity very well, and it will protect copper. Copper is a soft metal that oxidizes very easily and the gold is there just to give it a good protected coating on the pins and to stand up and withstand the wear of repeatedly having a contact go across the pins over years and just kind of wearing that away. But when I'm looking I don't know how well that's going to pick up. You can kind of see there looks to be some sort of lines that are going across the pins this way. So what I suspect is at some point in time, somebody actually took some sandpaper because this game wasn't working properly. They took some sandpaper to this and just kind of sanded away at the pins. Um, I would highly recommend before ever doing such a thing that you actually go over it with some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. That way you get the corrosion off there and you minimize the amount of damage that can occur to your uh, fingers on your cartridge board. So we've got all of this cleaned up. It's ready to go back together. In order to put these back together, the, I believe this is gonna be the front side, but let me double check. Yep. So the front side of the game case is where your chips are gonna face. So when you put your board back in there, there's gonna be these grooves down here at the bottom to properly align the board and to hold it into place. And then you place the back cover on. There are three clips on the backhand side of this cover. Two of these clips on each side it has a hole that corresponds to where they line up in the front of the case and then the center clip actually has a little indention right here in the top 
So in order to put this back together, rest the clips on the edge, kind of like you do with the N64 cart. Uh, most of these cartridges that have clips go back together the same way, so it's kind of intuitive. Once you get in the practice of pulling these apart, you'll just get in the habit of rocking these back and forth when you're taking apart, you rock it away, that way you don't break the clips. And when you're putting it back together, you rock it forward with the clip edges on the edge of the back. So you line it up, make sure they go in their proper holes, rock it down, and then it falls into place. And all that's left is to put the three screws back in it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now I was kind of shocked with this copy. Let's see if we can get it to focus. That is a flathead screw with a rounded screw head and it has a hole in the center. It almost kind of looks like a rivet, but it's not really a rivet. Um, I don't know how many cartridges actually had this style of screw in the back, but if for some reason you put your screwdriver in there and you can't get it to bite, double check your screw heads and make sure that it is a Phillips head screwdriver. If it's not a Phillips head screwdriver, just grab the appropriate screwdriver that you would need and make sure that you gently back out the screws. Um, Phillips head screws stand up to a lot more torque than flathead screws, so being used in applications where you have to apply a bit of torque in order to secure something together, they're more appropriate and they are least likely to strip out or break out from uh, a tilted screwdriver. It is still possible, but uh, with these flat head screws, be very careful that you don't snap off one of the sides since there is a hole in the center of these. Uh, make sure you don't snap off one of the sides because it'll it'll be a real bugger trying to get it back out if you ever have to take it apart again. But now we're all done. Use some isopropyl alcohol, 91% concentration. Got all of that ink off from that magic marker. And then uh, later on, we'll get rid of this white residue with some plastic polish and uh, try and get this looking, you know, pretty darn good. The label, you really can't do a whole heck of a lot with. Um... It does have a coating on it. However, the uh, repeated use of the game cartridge being put in and taken out of the console has put some lines in this top area right here. And uh, of course, over time, you're going to get dirt, grime, and stuff like that on the label. Uh, what you don't want to do is put isopropyl alcohol on there and try and clean it off because one, you will saturate the label. You will weaken the bond of the adhesive for the label. Two, uh, you will weaken the label itself because it's made out of paper. And three, you will also pull off ink from the label. So you're really just doing more damage to the cart. And it's perfectly fine just to leave a label like it is and clean up the plastic. And just do your best to get the plastic looking good. Other than that, you know, other areas like this can't be repaired. You can replace it with a aftermarket label. But if you're a person that would like to keep everything as original as possible, or if you plan on selling a cartridge later on, you want to make sure that everything with that cartridge is as authentic as it came from the factory. A lot of people are not going to buy uh, reproduction labels that are on original carts just because they want the, uh, the authenticity of that cart for their collection. If they're really serious about collecting the uh, game cartridges, uh, they want to make sure that everything is as original as possible and they believe that the staining and the wear on the labels itself actually gives the game character. It's like it tells its own story about its history. So we got all that taken care of. Later on we might do a video where we buff out the plastic with some uh, plastic compound. But other than that, this project's done. So, thank you for joining us today. I greatly appreciate you stopping by. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Make sure you click on the bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. And if you'd like to get notified every single time that we put an episode out, go ahead and select the all notifications option. 
Uh, if you'd like to comment down below about how you try and restore your game carts, please feel free to do so. If you have any questions or concerns about how we did this, uh, if you would like to learn a little more about how these nest carts actually work, comment down below and uh, hopefully somebody from our community will get in contact with you and give you a response. If we don't have the answer, we will be more than happy to do some research and uh, try and figure out the answers to those questions for you. So, thank you for stopping by. Stay tuned for additional exciting videos and have a wonderful day.